Hi, my name is Katie May and I'm from creativehealingphilly.com. I am a licensed teen therapist and I work with teens with anxiety and depression and self-harm behaviors. I am here in beautiful Cape Cod. I am vacationing with my family and I'm also attending a training in positive psychology and the science of happiness and the power of connection. And I think that the power of connection is just so important and that's why I offer my teen group, my teen therapy group, my teen DBT group, because teens connecting with each other is a beautiful way to help them feel understood. It's a way to help them get the perspective of other teens to be able to hear how they're approaching situations, to help them solve problems by seeing different perspectives, and to get feedback from each other on how to cope with difficult situations. So one of the topics I wanted to tackle today was the idea of social media because I know for parents this can be such a concern. You know, how do I handle my teen being on their phone all the time? How do I handle Snapchat? How do I handle my teen being impulsive when they have all of this information and access right at their fingertips? How do I get my teen to connect with me, to come down to dinner, you know, to shut down, power down social media, to power down the computer so that they can actually be a part of the family? So I wanted to address that concern today because it's something that comes up a lot. So I have kind of um, a balanced approach to this because on one hand I think that the internet and social media can be a really amazing and powerful way for teens to connect when they don't have that kind of social connection at school. You know if I think about a teen who has trouble socially who has a hard time connecting in person in school they may find solace in the computer they may really find a sense of connection and meaning and really being a part of something when they connect with other teens online um, you know i have teens who are in the lgbtq plus community who have had difficulty finding these connections in their small towns or in their schools so being able to understand that they're not alone and to seek support from others going through something similar in the virtual world can be really helpful on the other hand we do have to find balance in these situations you know that you can't live your life completely online, that only having connections in online communities can be something that becomes unhealthy. As a DBT trained therapist, I'm always looking for a sense of balance. You know, when we go to any kind of extreme, it becomes unhealthy and unhelpful for us. So I have a few tips for you about how to manage your teen's social media use. And the first one, the first way to create a sense of balance is to have screen-free times or screen-free zones in your home and in your family. And what this might look like for you is, you know, no screens at the dinner table. You know, nobody on their phone or nobody watching TV when we're eating dinner together as a family. And this is really a time that we connect together. Or it might be we power down an hour before bedtime and we talk about what we're grateful for in the day. Or we talk about, you know, what's been good or important about our day and connect with each other as a family that way. So it's about carving out these screen-free times in our life so that we can connect with each other on a personal level. It's not about taking away social media altogether. It's not about over monitoring these things and um, making your teen or creating a sense of resentment that then they're going to want these things even more. It's about coming to a sense of balance and creating times where there are no screens so that you can connect together as a family. And I want you to be mindful of how you're using your devices as well. You know, if your child is talking to you, put the phone down, make eye contact and model that kind of healthy and appropriate behavior so that they are expected to do the same. So number one is all about creating screen-free times and modeling that screen-free behavior in those times. You know, expecting your teen or your child to follow through the same, the same behaviors and habits that you have. So be mindful of how you're using your devices as well. And number two is creating these opportunities for social connection outside of the online world. And like I was saying, a lot of teens have trouble with this. They may be more introverted, they may be shy, they may have social anxiety, they may be more withdrawn because of depression. And so what when I say creating these opportunities, you know, helping them find situations where they can connect with like-minded teens. And this may be finding a program at the library where they can do something, you know, engage in some kind of anime drawing or discuss a certain topic that's something that's um, important to them or that they connect with. It may be joining a sports team if they're athletic. It may be finding an art class. 
Um, so there are a lot of ways to create these opportunities for social connection. My favorite way is through teen therapy group. And I say it's my favorite because it's my favorite thing in the world to do is to facilitate these groups of other teens and they come together, you know, they recognize that they're not alone. They recognize that there are other people who are experiencing what they are and they're really able to relate to each other and feel understood and feel like they're a part of something. These teens that feel like they don't have someone in any other place or that no one understands them they begin to come together and they begin to support each other and really lift each other up and make each other better as individuals as well as enjoy each other's company as a whole um, in this beautiful therapeutic transformational experience so if you have a teen who's feeling socially isolated if you have a teen who's anxious and has difficulty making connections please know that connection is one of the most important factors in well-being and in happiness and connection and coming together as a group is something that has been proven to decrease anxiety and depression overall even if no other factors change the simple fact of coming together of joining and recognizing that you're not alone so please comment below reach out to me let me know if you have a teen who would benefit from this level of support and let's connect and explore whether teen therapy group is right for your teen if you have questions about social media and how to balance that with your teen comment below and let's explore together how we can work through it and how you can find more balance in your life with your teen and your family thanks for listening today and have a great day again katie from creativehealingphilly.com and i look forward to connecting with you soon take care bye